with you in Lamar at the Lamar Community Building, getting set for the Lady Savages and the Lady Beat Diggers in the Class 3A Sweet 16 matchup. Now time for the Lamar Lady Savage starting lineup. They are brought to you by Community State Bank of Lamar. Usual five for Lamar as they've had all season long. Experience late in lineup. Senior guard number five, Chelsea Vallejo. Senior guard number 14, Taylor Wirtz. Vallejo and Wirtz both averaging about 16 a game to lead Lamar. Senior guard number 23, Abby Reed. Down in the post, the junior, number 30, Courtney Clark. And the senior in the post, number 35, Summer Eberhardt. Four out of the five savages in the lineup. Starting lineup, that is, our seniors, the other a junior. Talking about trying to break down this matchup and the advantages each team has. Lamar might have more speed. Rush might have more. Certainly does have more size. Nobody's disputing that. Now, Rush has a somewhat of an experienced team, but they don't have four seniors in the starting lineup. We'll see if that has any sort of factor if this game is close in the fourth quarter. All season long, the Lady Savages have had some games here and there where they've really had to step up in the fourth quarter in order to win a ball game on the road. I can think of three or four different games where they on runs of 17-1, to 18-2, to 2, something in that variety to close out a ball game after it was nip and tuck, and they win the game comfortably. The only time they didn't happen was last weekend, a week ago, against Manitou Springs, who handed Lamar's only loss of the season. And Lamar will certainly be looking to start this ball game a lot better than they did against Sheridan. Lamar's first point did not come until the 324 mark of the first quarter, and a free throw by Jericho Malgoza off the bench. The brush will come out in the road. I'm just going to call it brick. I'm, it's kind of hard to tell exactly. Uh, what I want to call this shade of red. It's more like a brick, but uh, I'm sure beat digger fans up there know exactly what color it is, and they know what uh, brush has got it. But they got that yellow trim, Lady Savages, with the white uniforms with the orange trim and the black numerals. We're ready to go here in this Sweet 16 matchup. Tip in the air is, well, we're going to try it again. Or not. It always confused me a bit on the rule on the jump ball. It was won by Lamar initially, but Courtney Clark grabbed it in the circle. She was jumping along with Kristen Burke. She grabbed the ball, and you can't do that, so Brush will be awarded the ball to start the game. So now Lamar has the possession arrow right off the bat. Inside they go, and a dangerous pass intended for Mariah Brown in the paint is stolen away by Clark, and so the Lady Savages get the turnover in the first 15 seconds. Here's Vallejos, pull up 15-footer. Good for Chelsea Vallejos. And the Brush defense not getting up quickly enough. Vallejos loves to do that. Drive down the court and pull up from about the free throw line extended. 2-0, 30 seconds in. Now here is Shelby Wooliver, junior for Brush. She'll bounce it off to Mariah Brown. Wooliver was very good in last night's game, especially in the first half. Getting Brush off to a good start. Inside they go to Berg, who's triple team. She loses it out of bounds. So there's immediately the first look down low for Berg. And Lamar quickly wanting to take the ball out of her hands. Double team, and then I saw a third Lady Savage come over late. So two brush possessions, two turnovers. Now here's Abby Reed. Dangerous pass up top to Vallejos. Cross court to Taylor Wirtz. Back to Vallejos, top of the key. They'll go right side. Here's Reed, an 18-footer. Not there. Long rebound, though, comes out to Wirtz. She'll go baseline. Tough shot, but she got it. Taylor Wirtz, unafraid of the tall defense. She shoots it right in. 4 nothing. Now, loose ball in the backcourt. And we're going to have a hell ball. Works forced the jump ball, and Lamar's going to get it back. This is the exact opposite of how Lamar started last night against Sheridan. Quickly a 4-0 lead for the Lady Savages, and they'll have the ball back here. They look about two steps faster than they did as well in the first quarter compared to last night. Works a three in the corner. Yes! Taylor Works has five early on, and we've played barely 90 seconds, and it's already 7-0 Lamar. Here is Wooliver able to skip past two defenders, get into the front court, pass deflected and stolen by Vallejo. Here's Chelsea racing down the court. Two on one break, pass knocked out of bounds. So good job by Brown to recover for Brush and knock it away. But Lamar will inbound along the baseline with a 7-0 lead. 6.23 left in the first. Here's Abby Reed off the inbound for Lamar. Baseline to Vallejo in the corner. She'll go up top to Wirtz. Rush coming out in a 2-3 zone, it looks like. 
In the corner, Reed with a pump fake. The senior guard was held scoreless for Lamar last night. Had some good looks, would not go. Ball knocked out of bounds by Emma Mortensen. Lamar will inbound right in front of the Brush bench. Lamar is going from left to right. Brush right to left here in the opening half. We've played two minutes. 7 nothing Lamar. Here is Vallejos. Baseline to Reed. Jump shot. A little short this time. Loose along the baseline. Picked up, though, by Summer Everhart. Over to Wirtz for a shot. Yes. Taylor Wirtz is on fire. She has seven of Lamar's first nine, and it's a 9-0 lead. In the backcourt, still some trouble for Brush as Williver double teamed and a 30-second timeout called by Brush. We'll keep it right here. This Brush timeout is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Let the State Farm Insurance office of Greg Mullen and Brush help you find the best policy to fit your life. Home, auto, life, health, State Farm Insurance is here for you and your family. Give Greg Mullen a call at 842-4555. 5.39 to go first quarter. Lamar 9, Brush nothing. I honestly did not see this coming right out of the gate. Certainly Lamar capable of this, but given the way they started last night, boy, this has been quite a turnaround. They ended up with nine points after one quarter, after a late flurry to end the quarter, but certainly a poor start, but not this afternoon. See if Rush can recover here. They will inbound in backcourt. Inbound to Brown at midcourt. Maleos picking her up. Here's Mortensen driving right side. Entry pass to Burke. It's a loose on the floor and still loose. Finally picked up by Mortensen. Brush nearly giving it away again. Here is Berg, 18 feet out, guarded closely over to Brown. Brown will dribble to the right side. Leos is sticking on her like glue. And now Brown loses control of it, tries to save it, throws it back to Wolliver. He came in in support. Wolliver to the left side, down to the lane. Shot blocked out of bounds by Wirtz. Looks like Wolliver had beaten her off the dribble, and Wirtz just came in there and swatted it out of bounds. In comes Katie Tecklenburg, a player that I talked with Coach Melgoza about in pregame. She had a terrific effort last night. No points, but a few offensive rebounds, and she had countless deflections and steals. Inside, Rush goes, and off the glass and in is Emma Mortensen as they size of Rush right there, paying dividends. The height advantage of Mortensen scoring over Eberhardt. 9-2. Lamar quickly trying to push the pace, and it's going to be knocked out of bounds. And back to Rush as the ball deflected off Taylor Wirtz. So chance here for Brush to crawl back in this one. 9-2. to two. Lady Savages with 4.48 to go in the first. Lamar still applying pressure in backcourt. Here's Mariah Brown. Pass up ahead to Wooliver. Wooliver goes baseline to Berg for a shot. That's not there. Rebound tipped. And saved by Vallejos in the corner. And she'll move it up the floor. Vallejos into the lane. Tough shot and she's fouled. Somebody's got to be able to stop the ball because Vallejos will do that all day. Somebody's got to meet her right around that three-point line and force Lamar to set up their half-court offense. So Vallejos, with six of eight from the line last night, will step up here. First one good. So far, it's just been worse than Vallejos. No, not much of a surprise from a scoring standpoint. Everhart checks back in for Lamar to replace Cart this time around. And also Jerica Melgoza coming in. Free throw missing this time for Vallejo. She's one for two. It's a 10-2 Lamar lead nearing the midway point of the opening quarter. Winner goes to the final eight to be held at the Air Force Academy next week. Action beginning next Thursday. Here's Mortensen in the corner. Lobs it over to Wooliver. She'll hand it off to Brown. But certainly Lamar making things difficult in the half court. Left side, Whaler. Entry pass to Burke. Spin baseline. Blocked by Eberhardt. Ball loose and out of bounds. Back to Lamar. Wow. Eberhardt has a size disadvantage. But she just went... Took, took that arm of and blocked Burke's shot. Wirtz and Clark quickly come back in for Lamar. And this time Vallejos and Tecklenburg will sit out. This is, for the Beat Digger fans tuning in, this is quite common for Coach Eric Melgoza of the Lady Savages. He will shuttle players in and out very early. Sometimes players will only get about a 15 to 20 second breather and they're back in. Here's Melgoza, cross-court pass to Reed. She'll step into a jump shot, not there. Rebound tip. Clark saves it to Melgosa. Back out front, Wirtz wide open for a three. She hit it. 
the second three for Taylor Ward. She has 10 already, 13 to 2, Lady Savages. 3.30 to go in the opening quarter. Wolliver across midcourt, bounces it over to Whaler. Now a shot for Brown is good from inside the lane. Mariah Brown shoots it in, her first field goal for the Lady Beat Diggers who trail 13 to 4. Here's Wirtz across midcourt, slips through a double team and calls for a palming violation. I don't think she's ever called for a palming violation all season. Split two defenders. But this is an entirely different officiating crew than what I've seen this year. In fact, these last two days here at the Community League, I've not recognized any of these officials. I'm not sure where they bring them in. Probably bring them in from another state. I don't know. So, naturally, with a new different officiating crew, you're going to see some things called that maybe you wouldn't normally see. Got a whistle and a foul coming up here on the Lady Savages. Wirtz thought she had a clean steal. But she's going to get called for a push. <laughs> Lamar playing very physical and in the early part of this ballgame on defense. Sheridan scored four first-quarter field goals last night. And I think they only had four or five more the rest of the game. Lamar turned it on, but really, again, that was part of that slow start they had yesterday. Loose ball picked up by Melgosa as Vallejo's got her hand in the passing lane. Vallejo's one on two, splits defenders, and she fouled. Or, uh, excuse me, Vallejo's also very good in the open court. Even when the numbers are working against her, she went one on two, split the defenders, and drew the foul. First foul on Whitney Mount for Brush, the junior. Vallejos knocks down the free throw. She's got four points. Back to a 10 point Lady Savage lead. 2.47 remaining first quarter. Vallejos knocks that one down. And it's the biggest lead for Lamar at 15 to 4. Ties for the biggest lead. They've had it at 11 a couple of times. Here's Williver across midcourt to Mortensen baseline. Pump fakes. Going inside to Lorenberg, who had it poked away. It's loose on the deck. Still loose, and we're going to have a jump ball. This time it stays with Rush. Kristenberg getting a break, and Lorenberg coming in. Mountain will throw it in. Having some trouble, finally throws it into Williver. Now Mount. Entry pass to Berg, baseline, shot is up and in as she whips down the baseline. So Lauren Berg gets the basket, her first one, 15-6, Lamar. 2.18 to go in the first. Lady Savages across midcourt with Vallejos running the point. Left side, Melgosa. Clark double teamed in the post. 1-3-1, it looks like from Brush defensively. Here's Vallejos, right wing. She'll pop a three off the front rim. And the rebound taken by Mount. And she wants to quickly push the pace the other way as Lamar gets back. Now a three-point shot for Whaler. Yes. That's Melissa Whaler hitting the three for Brush. And it's a six-point game at 15-9. to nine. Lady Beat Diggers taking the early punch and hanging around. Here's Reed over to Clark, who's double-teamed. Collects it back to Vallejos now up top. 90 seconds left in the first. Now here's Reed trying an entry pass. It's stolen away. Really was never there as Clark had been double teamed the whole trip. Here's Williver across midcourt. Baseline to Mortensen. Minute 15 remaining in the first quarter. 15 to 9 Lamar. Here is Mount. Hounded by Vallejos. Now here's a jump shot for Mortensen left side. Air ball long. And Everhart chases down the loose ball for the Lady Savages. Up ahead to Vallejos. He's got room to run. Passes it baseline to Melgosa for a shot. Not there. Clark, offensive rebound, and she's fouled. Clark barely played in the first half yesterday against Sheridan. Had some early foul trouble. But had 10 second-half points and was especially effective on the offensive glass. Like right there. First foul on Melissa Whaler. Third team on Brush. Clark's free throw is in and out. Tecklenburg back in for Lamar and also Lexi Cohen making her first appearance for Brush. Maddie Kerr, a freshman, 
enters the ballgame. And also, Kristenberg is back in the ballgame for the Lady Beat Diggers. Clark hits that free throw to get her on the scoreboard. Seven point, Lamar lead, 53 seconds left in the first. Up ahead, pass deflected, out of bounds. That's going to be Lamar ball. It was Cohen who tipped it initially, but it deflected off of Wooliver last. Two officials both agreeing immediately. So Lamar with a chance to increase the lead. They've had it up to as many as 11. Brush cut it to six moments ago. It's a seven point spread right now. 37 seconds left in the first as Vallejos crossover dribble. Now we'll back up. And Kerr challenging her defensively. Cohen back over to Vallejos. Down to 25 seconds. Like she just wants to run down the rest of this first quarter clock and then make something happen. Now pass to Tecklenburg. Up top to Cohen and back to Vallejos again. We're under 15 seconds. 16 to 9, Lamar. Now under 10. Here's Vallejos, crossover dribble, into the lane. Bounce pass deflected and picked up by Wooliver. Running the other way, down to three seconds. Wooliver strips, loose ball, and out of bounds with one and a half seconds. Two Lady Savages came in to poke the ball away. So now Brush has an opportunity with one and a half seconds to try to get another score before the end of the quarter. Wooliver will throw it in. Into Kristen Burr, dribbles, tough shot, no good. Got a good look, but it wouldn't drop. Good first quarter here at the Lamar Community Building. A great start for Lamar, but Brush taking that first punch and then pushing back a little bit. 16-9, Lady Savages after one. Let's take a 30-second break on KL Lamar and KSIR. We'll take 30. Earn 0.65 percent. Ethan, that's back here at the Lamar Community Building. 16-9, Lamar over Rush as we head to the second quarter. Two other scores to update in Class 3A for the girls. Peak to peak, leading a length of 15 to 5 after one. The winner of this game would get the winner of that one in the final eight. Also after one quarter, it's Sterling 14, St. Mary's 11. It's Lamar Ball to begin the second quarter here at the Lamar Community Building. Chelsea Vallejos in the corner to Wirtz. Wirtz with a huge first quarter. She'll spin baseline. Loses control of the ball, and it's stolen away by Williver. But then has it taken back by Clark, but she was out of bounds. Lamar will bring out the full-court press. Inbound to Williver, who quickly goes up the right sideline, and they break the pressure without much resistance. Here's Williver, wheeling to the foul lane, dishes off to Berg for a shot. Not there, and Clark with the rebound. I think Lamar will settle for Burke shooting 18-footer. She can't hit it from out there, out there, but she's much more effective in the post. Here's Vallejos. Directing traffic over to Wirtz left side. Wirtz underneath the screen. Bounces it over to Reed at the top. Now to Vallejos. Right wing, she gets the screen. Chelsea... 17-footer, partially blocked, comes right to Clark, who is going to be, that's going to be a jump ball. That is the correct call, I believe, and it's going to be brush ball. Mortensen checks back in for brush after not starting the second quarter. 16-9, Lady Savages in front, seven minutes to go before the half. Here's Waylert dribbling out front. Able to slip past the defense. Shot from the elbow is no good. Rebound loose, and Reed digs it out of there somehow. One of the shorter players out there. But Reed able to come out of there with it and give Lamar the offensive possession. Vallejos had Eberhardt open, it seemed like, in the post. Didn't pass the ball. Now it's Reed losing control of the ball. It's tipped out of bounds by Brown. 6.30 to go, second quarter. Still 16 to 9, the same score we had after one. Substitutions for Lamar as Tecklenburg and Melgosa check back in. And it'll be Vallejos to inbound along the sideline. Up into Melgosa at the top of the key. Cross court pass to Wirtz, almost too high. But Wirtz able to get it. It's Wirtz on the right wing. She'll use the screen from Clark, bounce it up top to Tecklenburg, left side to Vallejos. And Vallejos will 
step into a three. Not there. Rebound loose. Picked up by Clark underneath. She scores. That's big for Lamar with as much size as Rush presents. Clark has to step up, and that was a big offensive rebound. She's had a couple of those. Pass deflected out of bounds by Wirtz. Saved by Brush. Don't have an official number on deflections this year, but if I had to be a betting man, I'd bet Taylor Wirtz probably set the savage record for deflections in a regular season. She has always been all over the place defensively, wreaking havoc. Inbound to Berg up top of the key. That's Kristen Berg. Lobs it into Lorenberg baseline, and Wolliver shot is blocked by Wirtz, and Wirtz able to save it initially, but then right back to Brown, who's fouled by Vallejo. A good job by Brown sticking with that play. She ends up getting fouled by Vallejo, and that's her first personal. Two team fouls on Lamar. Brush has committed three. Much like last night's game's fouls, team fouls really weren't much of a factor. Here's a jump shot baseline for Brush. That's Whaler missing. Offensive rebound to Lorenberg. Her shot blocked. Safe, though. Back out front to Brown. Entry pass again to Berg, who turns up off the glass and in. And Berg uses the height to her advantage. She's got four to lead Brush off the bench. It's 18-11, to 11, Lamar. Clark, baseline to Melgosa. She'll pump fake. Cut off baseline and now double team. And we're going to have a whistle timeout, Lamar. Malgosa had nowhere to go along the baseline, and Coach Eric Malgosa will get the timeout. 5.20 to go, second quarter. It's going to be a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. Take a moment and thank some of the sponsors who helped us bring us this ball game. Here in the Lamar area, special thanks to Davis Tice Law Office, Lamar Auto Parts, Thriftway, Arc Valley Auto Service, Parker Mechanical, Crop Risk Advisors, Peacock Funeral Home, Tri-County Ford Lincoln, Community State Bank, Valley Lawn Care, The Loach's Water, Prowers Medical Center, and Wallace Gas and Oil. So it'll be Lamar Ball. They got bailed out from the timeout call. Nothing much going on that offensive trip at that point. But they'll have another opportunity here with an 18-11 to 11 lead. Lamar has led right from the start. Their biggest lead has been 11. Here's Vallejos in the corner. She'll bring it back up top. Brush still in his own defense, a 2-3 or a 1-3-1. Here's Ward's baseline, three-point shot, not there. Rebound picked up by Williver. Five minutes to go now before the half. Here's Williver up over to Brown, who will put up a three, not there. Good look, but it wouldn't drop, and Clark rebounds. This time it'll be Wirtz up to bring it up, and she'll flip it to Vallejos. Vallejos runs the point most of the time, but Wirtz can run it just as well. There's Wirtz driving towards the right. She's cut off, so back it out. Bounce pass to Clark. Clark looking. Now she'll shoot an 18-footer. Oh, not there. I've never seen her shoot one that far out before, and it nearly went in. Just falled off the rim. Brush rebounds, and they come back with a chance to get within five or maybe four. Berg up top. Entry pass to the paint to Lorenberg. Back out front again to Brown for a shot. Barely off the rim, no good. Saved under there by Wooliver, who had her shot blocked, and then she's fouled on a second try. Wooliver kind of reminds me of Taylor Wartz of Lamar. She's, again, not, not afraid to mix it up down low with taller players. Of course, Wooliver herself is not very short. She's 5'7", not bad. Free throw is no good for Wolliver, who has yet to score in the ball game. Midway through the second quarter, seven-point Lamar advantage. Second shot good. It's now an 18-12 Lamar lead with 4.04 to go first half. As Wolliver gets her first point of the game. It's Vallejos up the floor. She'll get a screen out top from Clark. Bounce pass to Eberhardt, top of the key. Starting five out there right now for Lamar. Here's Reed. Over to Clark and back to Vallejos. Left side, Wirtz. Now Vallejos. Vallejos into the paint, lost control. The ball tipped up in the air and Burks got it. 
Brush defense has been stingy here the last few minutes. Long pass up ahead to Wolliver. She'll gather it and dump it off to Brown, left side. Back to Wolliver up top for an open three. Yes. That's the three for Wolliver. It's just a three-point game now, 18 to 15. And Vallejo's long pass up ahead goes out of bounds. She was looking for words and threw it too far, and so now Vallejo's will come out of the game. Cohen checks back in, but give Rush credit. They were down 11 points early on. But Lamar has had trouble scoring here in the second quarter. Loose ball, steal by Wirtz. She just picked the pocket. Bounce pass to Reed, layup good. First point for Abby Reed. Lady Savages needed that. They lead 20 to 15. Under three minutes to go, second quarter. Here's Whaler, running into a bit of trouble, but we have a foul on Lamar. Maybe Reed calls for a blocking foul. First on Abby Reed, and the team's fourth. 2.47 to go before the half. 20 to 15, Lady Savages. Entry pass to Lauren Berg. Up top to Brown. Back to Berg in the post. Spins baseline. Air ball. And the rebound to Wirtz, who quickly wants to push the pace. Wirtz had it poked away, though, from behind by Wolliver and stolen away. Here's Whaler. Into the paint for a shot. Not there. Rebound loose, and Epplehart rips it out of there. Wirtz with a pass up ahead to Cohen. She'll throw it back to Wirtz at the top of the key. It's Wirtz dribbling to the left. The bounce pass to Reed. Now Reed in a little bit of trouble. Had it poked away. It's loose on the floor. Picked up by Brush. Here's Brown with a bounce pass to Williver who will miss the layup. And we got a whistle and a foul over the back. Oh, boy, missed opportunity for the Lady Beat Diggers as Bolivar was all alone down there, missed the layup. And then she committed the foul over the back. Tecklenburg and Vallejos check back in for the Lady Savages. A minute 52 to go second quarter. We've got ourselves a ball game, 20-15, to 15, Lamar. They've led the entire way, but had an early 11-point lead. Rush has hung tough. Vallejo's up the floor quickly, throws it back up top to Wirtz and back to Chelsea on the left wing with a minute 40 left in the half. Lamar has only scored four points here in the second quarter after scoring 16 in the first. Now Wirtz nearly turned it over again. Vallejo's able to pick up the loose ball. This is kind of what Sheridan did in the early going last night. Playing right up and stingy. Entry pass to Eberhardt underneath. Tough shot against the taller defenders. Not there. And the rebound to Kristen Burr. Now here's Williver. Stops. Throws a pass to Brown. Baseline Berg. Cross court pass Williver. And she's hit by the first to lay up. Williver now has six. Three point game again. 20 to 17. 55 seconds left first half. Vallejos over to Cohen, baseline. Cohen with a bounce pass. It's kicked. So Lamar will inbound with 48 seconds. Mortensen checks back in for the Lady Beat Dickers. And Vallejos to inbound along the baseline. Over to Eberhardt, back to Vallejos. We'll back it out. We go under 40 seconds. 20 to 17, Lady Savages. Vallejo dribbling to the left side. Now she'll back it out again. This is what she was trying to do at the end of the first quarter, but ended up resulting in a turnover. We're down to 20 seconds. Vallejo trying to avoid a double team. Backs it out. Down to 13 seconds. Baseline to Wirtz. Wirtz had it poked out of bounds with exactly 10 seconds. Coach Belgoza calling out the play for Lamar. Vallejos will throw it in. She lobs it into Wirtz. Down to 8 seconds. Wirtz out front with 5. Wirtz gets the screen. 
Driving right side. One second. She's not going to get a shot off. Wow. Great defense from Brush to end the first half. As they really clamp down after a slow start. It's Lamar 20, Brush 17 as we've reached halftime here. Each team will have to make more adjustments as this ball game goes along, but we've got ourselves a contest. It looks like Lamar might run away with it in the first quarter, but Rush hanging tough, and they're only within three points as we hit halftime. Let's take a two-minute break here on 920 K Lamar Lamar and 1010 KSIR Rush and Fort Morgan. We'll be right back in a couple of minutes. All right, Ethan Denton back with you at the Lamar Community Building. This girls' Sweet 16 Class 3A matchup, Lamar 20, Brush 17 as we get ready to start the third quarter. Got some scores to report from other Sweet 16 matchups today, ones that were able to get updated. Uh, a couple of scores after one quarter was Holy Family dominating Cedar Ridge 17-3 to after one. After one quarter was Eaton over Bennett 22-16, and then the rest of these games at halftime, peak to peak over Aletha 22-7. to Moffat County over Bishop Machabuff 23-21. And Sterling over St. Mary's, 25-16. Those are halftime scores. And no report from Trinidad Pagosa Springs, that matchup, and Manitou Springs Grand Valley. Nothing to report from there. So it'll be a Lamar ball to begin the third quarter. Lady Savage has gone up to a 9-0 advantage, led by as many as 11 at 13-2 and 15-4. A brush and ending the first half on a run to get back within three. Brush extending that defense. That looks like they're going to start man-to-man. Played primarily 1-3-1, 2-3 zone. Wirtz nearly had it poked away by Brown, but she gets it up top to Vallejos. who will go in the corner to Reed. Reed triple teamed over there. Finally gets it over to Vallejos, who drives into the paint area, and she's bumped and fouled by Mariah Brown. First foul on Brown. First foul of the second half comes at the 735 mark. Vallejos to inbound. Up top to Eberhardt and over to Reed and now Wirtz. Now Vallejos on the right side. She'll go cross court to Wirtz for a three. That's not there. Rebound pulled in by Mortensen. Now Wooliver, bringing it the other way, picks up the dribble, passes it off to Brown. Brown guarded up top. Entry pass to Kristen Berg down low, misses the shot underneath. And Berg gets the second chance, that won't go. And Eberhardt grabs the rebound. Berg was a little off balance on that second attempt. Now here's Vallejos, pull up 18-footer, way off the mark, and the rebound to Brown. Neither team able to score here in the first minute, 15 seconds in the third quarter, but quickly Mortensen the other way. She's fouled by Clark going up. That time the Lamar defense a little lazy getting back. The second on Clark. Each team now one team foul here in the second half. Emma Mortensen to the line. Free throw good. Gives her three points. And the lead is two for the Lady Savages. Mortensen ready to shoot again. This one is good. Just a friendly bounce. 20 to 19, which is just a one point game. 640 left in the third. Here's Wirtz, some crossover dribble going to the left side. And up top to Chelsea Vallejo as Brush backs up into that defense like another zone look. Looking to trap at every opportunity. Entry pass to Clark. Gathers it. Goes up. can get it. Eberhardt offensive rebound and stick back. Summer Eberhardt with her first field goal. Gives Lamar a three-point lead. 22-19. Here's Whaler down the floor for Brush up top. Now Mortensen top of the key. Goes left side to Brown. Entry pass in to Wolliver, whose shot was rejected, I believe, by either Wirtz or Eberhardt, and Vallejo sticks it out. Now Vallejo, driving baseline, is fouled. Lamar.
Marr will inbound here. Second team foul on Brush. Foul charge to Mortensen. Just their first. Delay host to throw it in. Over to Eberhard in the corner. She'll hand it off to Wirtz. We'll set up the offense. Wirtz bounce pass to Leo, stop of the key. 5.40 to go third quarter, 22-19 Lamar. Wirtz penetrates, tough shot off the glass, won't go. Rebound tipped and taken by Mortensen. Here comes Brush with Waylard up ahead to Berg. Berg will shoot an 18-footer and nail it. Well, Berg does not have to really be set for very long like a lot of players probably her, in her stature. She is skilled out there. Her first points of the game, 22-21 Lamar. Right side, Reed, a three-point shot. Barely draws iron, and the rebound to Berg. Now a chance for the Lady Beat Diggers to take their first lead. Mortensen over to Berg. Baseline to Wolliver. Back to Berg. Trying to throw a baseline to Mortensen. Up top to Brown. Now Berg up top. Nearly turned over. Now Berg's got a top of the key. Right side to Mortensen. Now Brown a three on the way. She hit it. Mariah Brown gives Brush the lead. 24-22. 4.35 left in the third. Here's Wirtz over to Vallejos. Pete Digger fans getting into this ball game. As you'd expect. Entry pass to Eberhardt in the post. Up. No good. And Berg rebound. Here's Waylert. Now Brush with an opportunity to extend the lead. And then Waylert fell over, but comes right over to Brown. Right side to Berg. Top Mortensen a shot. It's no good. Rebound to Wirtz. Midway through the third quarter, 24-22 Brush. Reed to the other end. She's fouled by Mortensen. Going up for a shot. So Reed will go to the line for the Lady Savages. Two fouls now on Mortensen. Reed will get two. First one good. Brings Lamar within one. Substitution for Rush coming in is Laurenberg. And Brown will get a break. So more size coming in for the Lady Beat Diggers. Reed's second free throw bounces around. It will not drop. And Clark with an offensive rebound, and she puts it in. Courtney Clark with another basket off an offensive rebound. Both of her field goals from that. It's a one-point Lamar lead. And then Williver in backcourt has trouble. Loose on the floor. Hump held ball. And it's going to stay with Brush. Lamar a little turned up all of a sudden after losing the lead. They've regained it at 25-24. Whaler to throw it in to Mortensen. Now Whaler handling the ball. Here's her pocket picked by Vallejos. Brush defense gets back. Now Vallejos has it poked away from behind out of bounds. It'll stay with Lamar. 3.28 to go here in the third quarter. Inbound to Wirtz. Way out front for a deep three. In and out. She was probably about 25 feet out. Another held ball as Lauren Berg was tied up with Clark, and this time it's Lamar ball. But Courtney Clark is making plays that really make a difference in games like this. 25-24, Lamar lead, and they have possession. There's Vallejos out front. Wirtz in the corner, entry pass Clark in the paint, bounce pass to Tecklenburg, goes up, first shot blocked, and saved by Melgosa, but then a bad pass, loose on the floor, picked up by Lauren Berg. Up the head to Williver. Williver working against Vallejos, and then we've got a blocking foul on Vallejos. Who appear to be just standing there. Lamar fans are as irate as I've seen them all year. They don't get too fired up 
on foul calls, but the ladies, I turned around, Lady Savage fans were not happy at that. It looks like Vallejos was just standing flat-footed, didn't even use her hands. Inbounds pass to Berg, baseline, attacking the basket, up for a shot, no good. Lauren Berg, offensive rebound, that won't go, and Vallejos rips away the rebound. And Vallejos is fouled by Whaler at midcourt. Whaler trying to go for the steal. Whaler with her second, and Brush now is mid-14 fouls. Here's second half, Lamar 2. 25-24, Lady Savages, 2.40 left in the third. Clock not running right now. Finally, it does get going as Vallejos shoots in an 18-footer. Got a screen out front, and Chelsea stepped into it. Her first point since the first quarter. She's got seven now for the game. 27-24, Lady Savages. Here's Whaler up ahead to Kristen Berg. Stop to Whaler. Now Mortensen pump fake, driving, had a ball stripped away, but it comes right to Berg, who lays it in. Lucky there for Brush as the ball stripped away, but the ball goes right to Kristen Berg, who was in prime position to score. She's got four, and it's a one-point Lamar lead. Here's Vallejos, left side. Ooh, bad pass. Out of bounds. As she was looking for Malgosa. He's a bit out of position. Everhart checking back in for the Lady Savages, along with Abby Reed. 2.02 to go, third quarter. One point game, 27 26. Lady Savages. Winner goes for the Elite, or the Grade 8, I guess you could call it. Elite, Great, whatever you want to call it. That's, that's the goal for these teams. Berg entry pass in the paint to Wolliver, who spins, won't go. And we got a foul over the back. Now Gosa was blocking out, and Lauren Berg went over the back to commit the foul. First on Lauren Berg, and now the 15th foul. So the foul starting to mount up just a little bit here for the Lady Beat Diggers. And dangerous pass again by Vallejo. Taken away by Berg at first, but then Vallejo's able to get it back. Lamar was very careless last night with some of their passes. Now it's Reed, a jump shot. Short, offensive rebound, Vallejos back up, won't go. And a rebound to Mortensen. Like Lamar was kind of just rushing those shots there. Here's Whaler over to Wolliver. A minute ten to go in the third. Wolliver into the paint area, dishes it off. Here is a shot by Whaler. Missed, but a foul on the shot. Happy Reed ran in to Whaler. <laughs> Second foul on Reed and the team's third. The chance for Brush to regain the lead with Whaler at the line. And we're tied. Brown checks in for Brush and Worth does as well for Lamar. Tied at 27. Free throw good for Whaler. 28-27, Lady Beat Diggers. They bring out a little pressure defense. Up ahead, Melgosa over to Wirtz. Wirtz to the right side to Reed. Reed going baseline. A little bit of trouble. Throws it over to Eberhardt for a shot. Off the back rim and the rebound off to Whaler. Up ahead, Lauren Berg to Brown. Long pass up ahead, out of bounds. A little too greedy that time was Brown looking ahead for Mortensen. Vallejo's coming back in quickly for Lamar, and this time Reed will get a break. Now Brush pulling out a full court press. Four defenders in the backcourt. Inbound to Vallejos. Right now she's working one on three in the backcourt. Chelsea makes it to midcourt, runs into a double team, had it poked away, and it's out of bounds. It will stay with Lamar. Vallejos usually does well against backcourt pressure, but usually if it's one on three, you have a hard time with those numbers working against you. 20 seconds to go here in the third. One point brush lead. Here's Wirtz. Baseline to Melgosa. Entry pass to Eberhardt. 
Back out front to Vallejos, down to seven seconds. Bounce pass to the baseline. Tecklenburg missed the shot. Offensive rebound to Lamar, and it's going to be Eberhardt going up, and she's going to be, that's going to be a jump ball call, and it's going to be brush ball. We got less than a second to go here in the third. Inbound to Brown, and that's it. So the Lady Beat is a big lead as we head to the fourth quarter. 28 27. Rush in front of Lamar. As we head to the fourth quarter, let's take a 30 second break on KL Lamar and KSIR. And the Lamar Lady Savages 27. Lamar ball as we begin the fourth. Chelsea Vallejos working up top. Goes to the left side. Double team, and she's going to be a foul, the pushing foul. Now, Wild Brush has been much, much better defensively in the last two quarters, after the first quarter. Here in the second half, the fouls have begun to mount just a little bit. That's the second foul on Brown and the team six. From any foul from this point will result in bonus free throws for the Lady Savages, something to keep an eye on. Lamar has committed three team fouls. Here's Wirtz up top of the key, over to Vallejos. Now Reed a jump shot. Nope. And the rebound to Whaler. Well, Reed has been cold the last two days from the outside. Entry pass to the paint. Mortensen up. No good with a shot. And Clark with the rebound. Still a one point beat bigger advantage. 28 27. 7 14 to play. Here's Vallejos. Baseline to Reed. Cross court pass to Wirtz up top to Vallejos. Now, Wirtz assessing the scene. We'll throw it over to Vallejos. Right now, Lamar staying patient, but looking not like much of a scoring threat at the moment. Cross-court pass. Wirtz over to Reed in the corner. Wirtz back to Vallejos again. Down to the 640 mark. Right now, it looks like Russian just a man-to-man. They've been switching defenses throughout. Entry pass to Clark in the post over to Eberhardt. We'll bounce it back up top to Vallejos. 6.23 to go. Vallejos, crossover, and then throws it. It looks like she threw it away, but the ball was tipped out. So Lamar inbounds. Trailing by one with 6.15 to go. Big screen out front set by Clark, and then we've got a whistle and a foul, I believe, on Brush. Clark set a pretty good screen. And a foul on Lauren Burke. A few of the Brush fans don't like it. But, you know, sometimes good screens can appear a little overzealous, like it should be a foul on the offense when it was, what is, when it was a legal screen. That's what the, apparently the officials thought. Clark will go to the line for a one and one. Free throw good. Tied up at 28 now. Second free throw bounces in. Clark is three of four from the line. She has seven points. 29 28, Lady Savages with six minutes to go. Whaler having trouble handling the ball out front. Dishes it off to Brown for an open three. Not there. Christenberg, offensive rebound. Back outside to Waylert, who's blocked by Vallejos. It's loose on the floor, picked up by Waylert. Entry pass, Berg, who turns, couldn't get it to go. And works with the rebound. And Brunstein Berg was rushing that time. One point Lamar advantage, 5.38 left. It's Vallejos dribbling the ball out front. Bounce pass to Reed on the right side. Reed then dribbles it off of a defender's foot as the official immediately signals. The ball goes into the backcourt, and Reed picks it up. So the possession continues. There's Wirtz on the left wing. Bounce pass up top to Clark. And now Vallejos. Right side, Reed on the wing. Now it's Wirtz. Bounces it to Vallejos. Vallejos puts it on the floor, drives to the basket. 
And contact, but no call. Rush Brown is going up ahead, but then a bad pass intercepted by Reed. And Lamar gets it back. Kaleos, 18-footer. Not there. Rebound. Tip. And he's going to have a foul on the Lady Savages. On Clark. These outside shots that weren't dropping, that were going in in the first quarter, not going in now for Lamar. Foul charge to Clark. That's her third. And the team's fourth. And in steal by Wirt in the backcourt. Then her shot blocked away by Whaler, who comes back the other way to Berg. Baseline pass to Mortensen. Up and in. Mortensen now has six. And back to a one-point rush lead. Wirtz over to Reed. As we near the midway point of the fourth quarter. Kaleos up top trying to pull out the signals. She'll put it on the floor, drive, bounce past Clark, baseline, up and in. Clark now has nine as the teams trade the lead here. 31-30, under four minutes to go. Here's Wolliver in backcourt, and Brush is going to need a timeout. Full timeout. They're setting themselves up for quite a finish here. Lamar 31, Brush 30 with 3.49 left. Let's take a 30-second break on KL Lamar and KSIR. Got ourselves a ball game that's turned into a defensive struggle. And this is March. You'd expect this. 31-30, Lamar over Brush. Winner goes to the grade eight. At the Air Force Academy, they've guaranteed three more games. The loser is finished for the season. Lamar will apply pressure in backcourt. Morris, Mortensen to throw it in. Having a little bit of trouble, and it's going to be turned over. Clark with the steal. Over to Reed, and back to Vallejo. Brush has done a great job avoiding turnovers ever since the opening quarter. Now Vallejo's into the paint, trying to... Dump off pass is knocked away by Berg. It's loose, and then Wirtz able to pick it up for the Lady Savages. It is very hard to just get a pass off once you get inside that three-point line. These teams are just so active with their hands. It's Vallejos handling the ball. 3.17 remaining. Here's Reed up top of the key. Picks up the dribble, throws it to Eberhardt at the top, and then back to Reed. Reed will drive underneath, shot blocked, and out of bounds, back to Brush. Reed really didn't have anywhere to go against those two taller defenders. Brown checks in for Lorenberg, and again Lamar will apply the full court press. 3-0-1 to go, 31-30 to Lamar. It'll be... Whaler to bring it across the timeline. Over to Wolliver. To Mortensen, top of the key. 2.48 remaining. Here's Brown. Guarded closely. Ball deflected and stolen by Wirtz. That was caused by Vallejos getting in the way of that pass. 2.35 left. It's Vallejos off the dribble. Going right to the basket, up, wouldn't get it to go with the left hand. Loose ball and a foul called. And it's going to go the other way. Boy, Vallejo set an open lane to the basket and then completely missed the layup. She'll commit the foul. She is right-handed. She was going to go up with the left and ball, I think, slipped out of her hands. That's team foul number five, so Brush will inbound in backcourt with 2.27 left. And scoring has grinded to a halt here in the last several minutes. Lauren Berg back in the game. She'll inbound it. Gets it into Williver. Also Tecklenburg back in along with Melgosa for Lamar. Got a blocking foul on Reed. Right near midcourt. That's team foul number six. Third foul, and now any foul the rest of the way for each side will result in foul, sh- foul shots. 
Everhart and Vallejos check back in as Nelgosa and Tecklenburg. Well, nope, we're going to have Reed come out of the game. Tecklenburg stays in. 2.21 remaining. 31 to 30, Lady Savages. Whaler up top to Williver. Williver double teamed. Passes the ball off to Mortensen. Ball deflected and taken away by Tecklenburg. It's Vallejos across midcourt. She'll back it out. We've got two minutes to go. Lamar by one. Pass to Wirtz, right side. Back up top to Tecklenburg. Ball deflected, but picked up by Wirtz. Both these teams have to be very careful with their passes. Timeout, Lamar. Full timeout, 1.47 to go. Lamar 31, brush 30. Let's take a 30-second break on... 920K Lamar and online at network1sports.com brought to you by Tri-County GM as well as 1010KSAR and KSAR.com. Okay, out of the timeout, Lamar Ball, 31 to 30, Lady Savages. A minute 47 remaining in our ball game. Inbound to Wirtz. Rush denying everything. Both these teams are when they're on the defensive end. Now it's Melgosa up top of the key. She'll dribble. Hit it over to Vallejos. And we hit the 130 mark. There is Melgosa dribbling out front, and the ball taken away. Out of bounds back to Lamar. Boy, coming in there was Whaler. Nearly picked that one off. Here's Abby Reed. Keep in mind as well, if we have a situation where the team has the foul. We'll have one and ones for a little while. Vallejos will throw it in. Bounce pass to, to uh, Wirtz. And down to a minute 20. Wirtz dribbling out front. Gets it over to Reed. Reed being guarded tightly over to Vallejos. Down to a minute 10. Hand off Wirtz. Back to Reed as they just run a weave out front. And now we got a foul called on Lauren Berg with a push, I believe. Yes. So who is fouled? It's either Reed or Vallejos. Third on Lauren Berg. It'll be Abby Reed going to the line for a one and one with 101 to go. She's one for two in the ballgame. Foul shot is good. 32 to 30, Lamar. 61 seconds to go. Reed again. This one no good. Rush rebound with Mortensen. Here's Whaler. Just a two point game with 55 seconds. Whaler comes into the front court, off of two. Wolliver, 48 seconds. Started closely. And finally pass off to Whaler. Savage is playing tight, 40 seconds. Back to Bulliver. Trying to get it inside. We've got a whistle and a foul called. A foul called. Push on Taylor Wirtz. Second foul on Wirtz. This is a one and one for Shelby Wolliver with her team trailing by two. 34.6 seconds left. Oliver, one of two from the line in this game. That one's good. Maddie Kerr will check in for Brush. Second free throw is no good. Rebound the pass. Bryant then nearly turned it over. Passed off to Wirtz and a timeout for Lamar. Oh, boy. Free throw miss. Clark rebounded it and then nearly turned it over. Wirtz got the possession. Lamar takes a timeout, a 30-second timeout. We're not going anywhere. We're staying right here. 32-31. Lamar with 30.9 seconds. Now, obviously, if this were the college game, you'd have the shot clock playing a factor here, but obviously in high school ball, there's never been a shot clock, so if Rush does not get an immediate steal, you know they're going to foul. 
as eventually Lamar has to be looking for that and have to be very careful with the wall. Rush will bring out the full court pressure. Any foul will result still in one and one. This game is far, far from being over. One point Lamar advantage as Clark will inbound. She'll get it into Wirtz. Wirtz in backcourt. Lops it up ahead and she's fouled. That would be a dangerous pass, but Wirtz was fouled on the pass. Welliver picks up her second. So Wirtz, who has yet to go to the line and hasn't scored since the first quarter, or she had 10, will step up with 26.4 seconds, a one-point ball game. Lauren Berg checks in for Maddie Kerr. Here's Wirtz's first free throw, one and one. Off the back rim, rebound, loose. And Hefferford picks it out for Lamar. Pass out front to Vallejos. Down to 20 seconds. Vallejo hands it off to Wirtz, and she's fouled by Wolliver. Now 16.8 seconds. Wirtz missing that one and one off the back rim. I thought that Wolliver jumped in and had the rebound, but then it was loose, picked up by Everhart. And that's the 10th team foul now on Rush. So it's two free throws now for Taylor Ward. That's team foul number 10. And Ward hits that one. 33-31, Lady Savages with 16.8 seconds. Second shot, drop. Right through the net. Timeout, Lamar. Lady Savages leads 34-31 with 16.8 seconds. A full timeout. What we'll do, we'll take 30-second break. 30 seconds. We'll be right back on KLMR and KSIR in 30. Our Farmer LLC. Ethan Dent back at the Lamar Community Building. We have 16.8 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Lamar 34, Brush 31. It'll be Brush ball out of the timeout. Team fouls. Brush now with 10 team fouls, so two shots for Lamar the rest of the way on any Brush foul, and Lamar has committed seven, so a one and one, unless it's a shooting foul. Full court pressure by the Lady Savages. Here's Lauren Bird to inbound against the backcourt pressure. Three can tie it. Bird to inbound. Looking, throws it in. To Whaler, long pass up ahead to Berg. Berg will shoot a three, not there. Rebound loose, picked up by that's Wolliver in the corner. Eight seconds down to Whaler, outside four seconds. Wolliver puts up the shot, no good. But a foul called with one second left. Is that going to be three free throws? Push, and that is going to be three free throws for Wolliver with 1.1 seconds. Oh my goodness. Wolliver is 2 of 4 from the line. Free throw, good. She needs 2 more. 34-32, 1.1 seconds. Wolliver again. No good. So now, we're going to have a timeout. Full timeout. We're going to keep it right here. The Wolliver made the first of three free throws. The second one, no good off the back rim. 1.1 seconds to go. The question now, if you're the Lady Bee Digger, is what do you do? Do you try to make the shot and then steal the ball or commit a quick foul? The odds weren't great there. Or do you try to miss the second one on purpose, try to get an offensive rebound and stick back? We've seen strange things happen. For Lady Beat Digger fans, probably didn't know this, I called the game back in December here at the Lamar Community Building between two 1A schools where a team was up by three points with less than three seconds and were shooting free throws and lost in regulation. We've seen strange things happen, but here it is, 1.1 seconds, two-point Lamar Lee, Wolliver's free throw is in and out. Oh, my goodness. 
from the Lamar Community Building. The Lamar Lady Savages, 34. The Brush Lady Beat Diggers, 32. One of the more important things, and they teach you as a young kid learning to play basketball, free throw blockouts, but especially who's got the shooter. Bolivar missed the free throw. It was in and out. She ran in there, grabbed the rebound, and then kind of rushed the shot. It didn't even draw iron. And then the ball was loose, and the clock had ran out by that point. So the Lamar Lady Savages survive and advance. This is March, after all, and that's what you have to do sometimes. You may not execute the way you want to, but if you just find a way to get a little bit of luck, you can make it happen. That's what the Lamar Lady Savages got. They win 34-32. Let's take a two-minute break, and we'll start post-game coverage on AM 920 KLMR and 1010 KSIR. Boy, what a ball game we had at the Lamar Community Building in this sub-regional of the state tournament. As I said before the game, seating, records, those don't matter when you have matchups like this. Everybody can play when you get to this point, especially in the round of 32 and then in the final 16 and so on. Whoever's left, they can play. That was on display today. The Lamar Lady Savages, for the first time since 2008, advanced to the grade eight of Class 3A, and they get it done with a 34-32 win over Brush. But the Lady Beat Diggers accounted for themselves very, very well this afternoon. Very much impressive. Uh, first yesterday with their win over Alamosa, and then today taking a huge punch from Lamar to start the game, falling behind 9 nothing early, and 13-2 and 15-4, a couple of 11-point deficits. From that point on, Brush really turned things around and... <laughs> uh, controlled the game in quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of the rest of the way grabbed the lead even in the second half a couple of different times and led going into the fourth quarter 28-27 but then boy did the defenses for each team really clamp down it was a struggle to score in the entire second half Lamar led 20 to 17 at halftime 16-9 after one and then 2017 at the half and it was just hard to score from that point on. Let's begin uh, post-game coverage. Final numbers for the Lady Savages brought to you by Ron Farmer LLC CPA. And for the Beat Diggers, their post-game coverage is brought to you by Buildings by Design. So again, Lady Savages had a three-point halftime lead. Then Brush outscored Lamar 11-7 to in the third to take a 28-27 lead to the fourth. And then Lamar outscoring Brush 7-4 to in the fourth quarter. And most of that, in effect, all of that for... Lamar was on free throws, so with the exception of a field goal by Clark. One made field goal for Lamar in the fourth quarter. The rest were five free throws. And for Brush in the fourth quarter, one field goal by Mortensen and two free throws by Williver, who had a chance with 1.1 seconds. She was fouled on a three-point attempt by <laughs> Taylor Wirtz. Made the first free throw to trim the three-point deficit to two, then missed the second one. Timeout was called, and then... The third free throw was missed halfway down and out, rattled out, but then Wolliver chased down her own offensive rebound for about three feet from the basket, had a looked like a clean look to tie the game, but rushed it, did not draw iron, and that was the ball game as Lamar survived 34-32. Let's go over final scoring numbers. First for Brush, Mariah Brown ends up with five points. Wolliver has ended up with eight. Six for Mortensen. Five for Waylert. Four for Laurenberg. And Kristen Berg also ended up with four. That was big for Lamar today as well, holding Kristen Berg down from a scoring standpoint. She still made her presence felt, but just two field goals in the third quarter. And Lamar needed that good to defense and then some to survive in this one. For the Lady Savages, Chelsea Vallejos with seven, about half of her average. Taylor Wirtz with 12. Abby Reed ended up with four. Courtney Clark had a good second half. She ended up with nine, and Summer Eberhardt scored two. And that was the scoring for the Lady Savages, who win at 34-32 over Brush. We're going to continue post-game coverage on KLMR and KSIR. Let's take a break. 
We'll come back in two minutes here on AM 920 KLMR and online at network1sports.com as well as on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. The idea of selecting a life... Ethan Denton back with you here at the Lamar Community Building. The Lamar Lady Savages move on to the final eight and will play at the Air Force Academy next week as they defeat Brush 34-32 in an absolute thriller, a defensive struggle right to the very end. Lamar scored 16 in the first quarter and 18 the rest of the game and still managed to win the ball game. It may not have looked pretty, but that's a good sign. The team is completely shut down for three quarters after a great start to the ball game and still managed to win. And you have to give Brush a ton of credit. Boy, they were right there, so close. And... Just came up a bit short. But there has to be a winner and there has to be a loser, and that's how this has to go. For Lady Savage fans, we do now know who they will play uh, the first game next Thursday at the Air Force Academy. Number five seed, Peak to Peak, knocked off number 12, Olathe, 49 to 38. So that means that the five seed, Peak to Peak, will take on the number four seed, Lady Savages, next Thursday at the Air Force Academy. Have a couple other finals to report or actually one other one officially to report right now. Uh, Pagosa Springs, the number two seed, blowing out Trinidad 57-25. So the number two seed over the number 15 quite easily, 57-25. So Lady Savage opponent, common opponent in Trinidad and Tri-Peaks play goes down. Other scores, a bit of a surprise, and I say a bit. The number nine seed Eaton blowing out number eight seed Bennett 66-38 in the fourth quarter. At halftime, it was Grand Valley over... Ma- uh, Manitou Springs, 17-14. Sterling over St. Mary's, 41-23 after three quarters. Holy Family led Cedar Ridge, 27-19 at the half. And one other score to report after three quarters, Bishop Mashabuth, 31, and Moffat County, 29. So the number six seed in a bit of trouble. Over in Craig, all the way across the state from us, way far away from here. <laughs> but those are the uh, scores to report. The Lady Savages will get peak to peak. Those two teams played one another in softball in the postseason back in the last fall. Lamar winning that one easily, but this is basketball. It'll be a little different, I imagine, this time. A little more competitive. And so the five seed will take on the four seed in the great eight. And each, and each of those teams that advance will be guaranteed three games uh, no matter what happens. And uh, so, anyway, that's the uh, situation to report from a scoring standpoint. Now for the Lady Savages, let's go now for our player of the game, brought to you by Tri-State Body Shop. And today, let's go ahead and give it to Courtney Clark, the post, junior post for Lamar. Uh, did not lead Lamar in scoring today with nine points, but really had a big second half, had some big offensive rebounds, and certainly held her own against the big size of the Brush Lady Beat Diggers. Clark performed very well today, hit a couple of big free throws in the fourth quarter, and when every point mattered. And so Courtney Clark is our Lady Savage player of the game. Uh, brought to you by Tri-State Body Shop. Let's take a 60-second timeout. We'll come back and wrap things up here from Lamar, here on 920K Lamar and 1010 KSIR. One other score to report from the Sweet 16 round. The final score to report, it was the top seed Holy Family defeating Cedar Ridge 62-43. to So those are the other... Score, that's the one updated score. Everything else still is what we last reported. A couple of scores and still from halftime and third quarter and so on, but just about everybody probably wrapping up right now. And here today at the Lamar Community Building, it was the Lamar Lady Savages defeating the Brush Lady Beat Diggers 34-32. to It was the four seed over the 20, but like I said, you know, <laughs> when he gets to seeding at this point, uh, you really can't uh, go too much with that. You have to just play the game, matchups. Things have to work themselves out, and everybody can play. And certainly Brush proved that today. They go home now, but uh, quite a season for the Lady Beat Diggers. They accounted themselves very, very well today. But that will do it here for our coverage of Lady Savage and Lady Beat Digger basketball as we doing dual stations here, AM 920 K Lamar and Lamar, and 1010 KSIR up in Brush in Fort Morgan. Thank you so much to everybody who tuned in this afternoon to basketball action in Class 3A for the girls. It was quite a lot of fun bringing it to you. So long from the Lamar Community Building.